Welcome back to the 2020 Ohio Hardwood Furniture Market. Today we have with us Barb Miller from Restoration Details. Barb is a local designer and she is going to tell you, the viewers, everything you need to stage your furniture for success in your showroom. Barb, nice to have you here with us today. Thank you. Take it away, tell Thank us. You. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about staging furniture or staging your showroom and setting yourself apart. Um, my background is I'm an interior designer, but I'm also a staging uh, professional. I started out years ago in real estate and um, I was a buyer's agent. So I had the privilege of hearing what people loved and what people didn't as they were about to make the biggest purchase of their life. So going through that, I went on to um, become a stager for real estate, which is very similar to what we're going to be talking about today in your showroom. Even though we're talking about the whole house in real estate, you are literally representing rooms in those homes. And um, a few things that I'd like to share with you is there's three things that people make buying choices. It's the price, the cost, which is super important, so it has to be competitive, and two, the quality, which is not lacking in this area. There's tons of quality and style. And, but the third thing is what we're gonna be talking about today, and that is about emotion, because you have emotional buyers. Most people are, some are more than others. Um, but many times you'll have a husband and wife come in and he's looking at price, he's checking how the doors close, and the wife is like, well, I want this style and I want this color, right? So we're dealing with emotion. So today I am gonna to try to help you stage your showroom and just give you five basic tips that can really, really help. And when I stage a home, I would do the same thing always. These are five very important things. And just to give you a little background on me, um, for example, the last three homes that I sold personally sold for a good price and they sold quickly, but this is what I wanted to tell you. The people actually wanted everything in the house. And I mean, pictures on the wall, pillows on the couches, used pillows. So there is a market for people wanting to buy what you have on your furniture. So we're gonna talk about that at the end, all right? So the first thing we're talking about is um, the temperature. Sounds silly, but I'll tell you a story that um, I experienced about a month ago um, with a client. I was at a furniture store and we were getting ready to pick out a high-end um, bedroom set. And it was all designed, we were looking at you know, wood types and colors and I was like, whew, it's hot in here. And we kind of smiled at each other. And then he took us to another level to show us more colors. And it was even hotter there to the point where I had like a little drip of sweat and then my glasses were fogging up. So I was like, whew, we gotta get out of here, you know? And I, I didn't say anything, but we left quickly. And that is not what you want. You want people to, at a minimum, be comfortable in your showroom. It can't be too cold, can't be uncomfortable because there's another furniture store right down the street, right? So this is not where we want to fail. The second thing I want to talk to you about is lighting. And this is kind of difficult because if you have a large showroom, you're going to probably be dealing with fluorescence. Mm -hmm. um, so fluorescence can be very cold and harsh and they come in blues and greens. And, um, but what I have found um, is if you can talk to a lighting person and get something that's on the softer realm in your um, fluorescence or do incandescence which is much warmer and it's just calming and relaxing so that'll make a huge difference but another thing you need to go into your showroom and check is I know when I do design work for commercial places they'll have a, a fluorescent that's blue and bulbs replaced there that are green yep. have a green tint and it is you won't know why you don't want to be in that room, but you won't want to be in that room because it's very um, unsettling. So, and then we're going to talk about lighting. We're going to talk about lighting um, as an actual staging thing. So if you sell dining room sets, for example, we have a picture that's here um, of a beautiful uh, chandelier and a light fixture over the table. That can make all the difference in the world. 
um, because it shows off your table and they see the possibilities. That's what staging does. It allows them to see the possibility that they can't see by themselves. And many times they're like, I love this. I love all of it. I want this dining room table, even though, and they love the light. And if you're gonna sell the light, I mean, they might wanna buy that light too. But if it's just for staging, that's fine too. And if you don't have a showroom where you can do that or you don't wanna get in the cost of that, you can very easily, with the ne next picture, um, see lamps, um, put them next to the beds and on the nightstands and in the living room and so forth, on the buffets. It just adds a warmth and a very homey feeling. So that's a good thing. The next thing is funny, it's smell. Um, the gift stores and the accessory stores have this down because when you walk in, you're like, oh my gosh, what is that, right? You just love it and you wanna, you wanna stay a little bit longer. You wanna look a little bit longer. So it's as easy as setting out a candle or if you don't wanna do candles in your furniture store, I understand that. You can use diffusers or oils um, and you really wanna cheat, get a little oven type thing that bakes cookies and set the cookies out. The men will love that. And there's nothing better than a cookie smell. So smell is super important. Oh, and um, the next thing is music. You might not think this is important, but I experience this all the time when I go into furniture stores and things. What, what is on? Sometimes it's dead quiet and it's very unsettling. And you want somebody to greet you with a, a smile and friendly. And then just to have soft instrumental music behind that is extremely helpful and it's calming again. And it lowers your stress level to allow them to continue to look and roam through your furniture store and find the perfect piece. Okay, so the fifth one we're gonna look at is what um, I specialize in is styling it. And styling can be done through text, uh, textiles, greenery, um, and accessories. And this is so important if you want to soften, soften, um, like let's say you're selling bedroom sets. If you put a nice comforter on, bear, and keep everything super neutral, people are always looking for bedding. You can actually sell the bedding if you'd like. You're, they're looking at linens, grays, um, light creams, whites, just solids. Super easy to sell because people are always asking me to find them for them. So that's another bit of income if you want to do something like that and then the greenery super easy very low cost to have and it really brings your furniture to life and as a great staging thing you can use um, silks for a pop of color I have some images here that'll show you what greenery does and then also there it is um, it just brings life to all the hard surfaces and pillows and textiles bring softness to your couches and bring different options, okay? And then the accessories, just to set up your dining room table with plates and glasses and a beautiful light, you know, floral in the middle of it is a wonderful option also. So this is what I wanna to talk to you about today. If you're a smaller furniture store and you're like, listen, I sell furniture. I don't wanna get into all this. Even if you've got, let's say you have six bedroom sets set up, just put one off to the off in the corner and set that one up and just buy things for that. You could do it as easily as that and do your music and do your, um, the smells, the candles and the lighting, just something as simple as that. And if you wanna take it to another level and do two to three, you know, sets, of um, decor, you can begin to sell some of that decor because greenery is very, people are always looking for good greenery and they'll pick it up and you'll have a different price point to work with. Also, you have to remember many times when people are looking for things, they have a friend with them. So if Judy is looking for a dining room set, Marcy might be with her and she's not looking for one, but she's like, oh, those are pretty lamps. That's beautiful bedding. Oh, I love that plant. So she's picking up things, right? So it's another source of income for, for the furniture store. So those are things I want you to consider and we're just gonna go back over and reiterate what we just spoke about. I think it's the 
the other slide. And it's about your, I don't know where it went. <laughs> but there it is, to set the mood. You're gonna set it with temperature, lighting, smells, music, and by styling. And if you need help with that, I do that for people. A short consultation if you wanna take it and run or if you would like that done, I actually do that for local furniture stores and I can do online styling too. So that's just an option. But. Wonderful, thank you so much, Barb. I really uh, enjoyed what you had to say about how you can create an emotional connection with your customers through your store staging. That's fantastic. Um, you mentioned a number of different ways to go about that. Um, and I'm just wondering if there is one takeaway for the viewers, one first step, what is the one thing that you want them to take away from your talk? Well, I, I, again, I think we just need to get them emotionally involved. Mm -hmm. And by, to do that, they need to be able to see the possibilities. That's what we create with staging, just seeing a possibility. Um, that opens up their mind to why this would look good and how, how beautiful and soft it could be mm -hmm. and giving them styling ideas too because people, people will shop around longer the more ideas they get. So we just want to keep them in the building as long as we can so they can see those beautiful pieces that you've created and you have for them to purchase. Thank you, so. Barb. Do you have any recommendations on how to take the next first step in getting help with what you have to offer? Um, I do have a website, so um, I have staging tips on that also. I, I do different things as far as um, uh, different services I provide. And under the staging, it has about 12 to 20 different steps that they can take. Okay. And if you're stuck and you really, that's not your thing, call me or call a local designer and see if they can help you out in setting up at least one to two venues that are super neutral, super um, uh, current. We want to keep with the current trends that people are seeing in magazines, Pinterest, all that good stuff, okay? So those are very neutral colors and that way it is more um, acceptable to, to a, a greater and larger number of people that are going to walk through your store. And I understand so. that you have a special? I do. I do. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I'm offering 30% off my um, consultation. It's an hour and a half consultation that will give you some just very basic ideas for your shop. And um, yeah, call me. And if you want to do anything beyond that, we can talk about different packages that I do offer. So. Thank you so much, Barb. Now, for more information about restoration details, you can take a look at this next segment, and we'll be back in a moment with some resources to help you keep and maintain your heirloom furniture. For years to come, stick with us, and we'll be right back.